What's up? Just wanted to do a quick little one here. Discuss a couple things. It's been going on. I guess to start off. Um, I've been seeing some meditation uh, videos and uh, guiding uh, videos and they, they kind of try to guide you into um, being more aware of your breath, melding the mind in with the breath. Just solely focusing on the breath. I feel like that's a good place to start for, for most people. Because, I mean, that's the main thing you're going to hear with meditation and where to start. But uh, if you've been doing meditation for a little while or if you are interested in uh, going a little bit deeper, I'm going to tell you where it's really at. And that is, you know, going into the heart, but you know, we hear this a lot as well, and uh, yeah, I can take on some new agey connotations, but what I mean by this is go into your heartbeat, bring your conscious mind into every heartbeat that you're having. Realize, become attuned with this beat, with this rhythm, with this flow. Allow your breath to meld in with your heartbeat. You may find that you no longer have the need to breathe normally like you normally would. You may come to find that you tap into a place where your heart beats become like micro breaths. And tapping into this place, you're gonna you're gonna be able to access some of these very deep levels of what some people talk about in meditation. But not just meditation. Just levels of beingness. What it really means to have awareness of all the processes that are going on within you all the time, at any given moment. It just all depends upon where your awareness lies. So if you do find yourself in these states of micro breaths within the heart, and you decide to explore within this state. Yes, you can still be within the body as well as without. Either way, you will find that whenever your mind becomes attached again to thought, it draws away from this Connected, connectedness, the connective rhythm and flow, and it brings you back into your normalized breathing patterns, your normalized thought patterns. So, if you decide to 
explore meditation. Just keep in mind that this is something that you can access. This is always something that you can feel your heart, your heartbeat. Feel your heartbeat. It will tell you so many things about your system, about your body, about your emotions. And eventually you can kind of get to a point where you even control that, control the heartbeat. And to an outside observer, it will appear as if that person is dead. But as I have told others in the past, just because someone appears to be not breathing, not of a heartbeat, it does not mean that they're not alive. So don't go doing your medical or your trained learned things on them because that may damage them. And I'm talking about people who enter into deep meditation, who enter into deep um, spirit healing, and I'm not, I'm not, so I'm not talking about people who are actually going into um, severe trauma or severe pain or severe modes of not knowing what's going on within the body to where, yes, that kind of help would benefit them to reignite their inner fire and desire to live, to rebalance. Okay, and also, this may be the last time you guys see me with the beard because my job has told me that I need to go back to a goatee. So, I want to talk a little bit about this, because I've been going through weird feelings with this. Um, at first, uh, you know, I, uh, I did not feel good about it. And then I started thinking about other people that it might affect, like, such as me certain managers and whatnot. Um, and so I kind of accepted that, okay, like, it, at least just for now, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And then, oh, just one second. Charettes. And then I started talking with a co-worker who uh, has a four-year-old beard that is about, I don't know, right around twice the size of mine. It looks very nice. It is the majestic beard I have mentioned in previous videos. But, uh... Just reconnecting with the power of the beard, the connection that other beards have with one another. Uh, just the feeling that it has to have, have a beard, um, especially once you grow attached to it, once you've grown it out for years. Which mine is uh, not not that old, but um, just in in its very early stages, I would notice uh, very tremendous, dramatic uh, changes um, within my 
I love myself. Um, I was reminded a lot of like, what is it, the uh, Samson in the Bible. I would have these uh, moments of uh, increased strength and willpower. I'm not saying that was because of the beard, but I'm not saying it's, it's not. I, mean, I'm not. I don't know for for sure. But um, I also notice a connectedness with um, other people, uh, wisdom keepers, wisdom truth seekers with with beards. Um, and as I I have been growing mine out, I have been noticing um, that connectedness happen and uh, expand as well. So, I don't know, like, these are feelers, like, I feel like I'm, I'm feeling more with, uh, these receptacles, like, so, I, I made the decision, like, last minute, and this was when I was supposed to shave, cut it that I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and and take a stand not necessarily because I think that I can change the policy and I also am very aware that the company does not give two shits about the employees at all so I understand where my general manager is coming from and that he doesn't have much say in the matter. He just has to do what he's told as well. So I was left with a few options. I, I, I did a quick bit of research and I found a certain uh, medical excuses that may or may not work. With this company, I probably would not. I could use certain uh, religious affiliations, but I don't necessarily want to go that route. And I mean that, yeah, that's being dishonest, but is it really? Because, I mean, I am everything, everything is me, so in that sense, like, it, there's no dishonesty. But what really made me, like, the final, like, nail in the coffin for me to change my mind here was, uh, the reaction that people had, uh, in my town with, uh, in hearing the news that, oh, my job is making me shave my beard. Uh, strong reactions and it was surprising to me but it was also uh, I don't know it felt good that people were like had that reaction because it was a genuine reaction it, it was heartfelt which isn't something I am uh, used to experiencing really all that much uh, in my day-to-day -day interactions with people, the kind of people that I am uh, used to interacting with because of this job. So, yeah, I decided that maybe because of enough people coming together and pressuring or stating how how they felt about it, perhaps that may have an effect and change the policy. Uh, the place I just came from, the store, the checkout lady, uh, she, when, I, when I told her of the news, she, uh, she seemed fairly disgusted with it. She kind of was like, wow, okay. Like, that's cool, but I, I kind of want to know more about about it. And uh, she said that 
at that place of employment, uh, they they try to implement a grooming policy, and one of the employees had about, I think she said about a 30-year beard, and he said it was like a part of him, and there was no fucking way he was shaving that. And then enough people stood up to it that the company changed the policy. So I just was having so many things happen to me, like, fairly quickly, synchronistically, that was in tune with the feelings I was having with the thought of shaving my beard, was, which was causing me a lot of uh, distress. Not just for me, but for for the for the coworker that's been growing out for four years, like, oof. And then also, one of the things I saw online was like, uh, beard depression is, is a real thing. It's like, uh, what is it called? Uh, whenever you lose a limb, phantom, yeah, phantom beard, basically. Uh, I mean, just the thought of shaving my beard, like, made me kind of depressed, but evidently that's a pretty uh, commonplace thing that people will get depressed if, after they have to shave their beard, which t totally makes sense. So yeah, I decided I'm going to fight this, but I mean, really, the kind of company I'm involved with, uh, I, I can kind of just, if, if the, hmm, if certain buttons are pressed, I can just, it's, it's not a big deal for them just to fire people, like, that's commonplace, so, I can't fight it too hard, or, and I mean, I don't know, maybe that is a sign that I just need to find a different, uh, locale of employment. So be it. Whatever, whatever happens, happens. I mean, I'm just gonna stop trying to row and go with the flow. But also realize and know that it's all a fucking show. So yeah, we'll see what happens. If we can get enough uh, people's support and put enough pressure on, maybe uh, the beards can stay. We'll see.